Hello everyone, Greg O'Rourke here. Welcome back to another episode of Fret Dojo. Fantastic to have people joining us from all around the world for this special session. So maybe for those of you that are watching us today, write in the chat wherever you're calling from, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or wherever. We'd love to find out from what country in the world you're calling from today. So um, just type it into the chat there and that'd be fantastic. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at a chord melody arrangement of yesterday's. Over the past few weeks, we've been studying the jazz standard yesterday's in detail. Not the Beatles song, uh, a lesser known song, but still a popular one in jazz circles nonetheless. And I thought what we could do today is look at a Lenny Bro style arrangement using uh, what we call two note chord voicings. Now, technically a chord is more than two notes. I know that people, uh, uh, I'm sure I'm gonna get sort of like uh, feedback on how that's not quite right, but that's okay because for the purposes on the guitar, these Lenny Bro two note voicings are very, very useful for creating some really cool interest either when you're playing solo or when you're um, playing in a band uh, as well. So let's have a look at that. But a couple of announcements uh, to kick things up, uh, kick things off. We've got the amazing Rodney Jones coming up in just a couple of weeks in the Fret Dojo Academy. And that's a wonderful chance to uh, connect with one of the, uh, the great jazz guitar educators of our time. He's the head of uh, the guitar faculty at the Juilliard School of Music. And he'll be presenting a workshop on the secrets of mastering jazz guitar. So we're really looking forward to uh, checking that out. So if you are interested in um, uh, coming along to that workshop, that's for my gold members only. And there should be, if, um, my fantastic backstage crew could pull up that little banner that has the um, has the discount code there. You can actually get 50% off your first month to gold membership by going to fretdojo.com forward slash sign up hyphen offer and use co coupon code jazz50. Okay, and so that's something that you can do right away. So uh, one more thing, if we just go back to... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my ma yes, it's true. I'm on a green screen, but that's okay. Uh, um, I'm actually on the road at the moment, so uh, so yeah. Uh, I, I had a feeling that was going to happen in this live stream, but that's that's all right. So um, uh, yeah, so ju just uh, just imagine I'm I'm at some sort of outside some awesome jazz club in New York or something like that right now. Uh, but uh, what uh, what something else I should mention actually before we get into the lesson is that. We've got a fantastic boot camp coming up. So it's called the Fret Dojo Boot Camp. It's our inaugural boot camp, and that's going to be an online 80-day uh, program where you can really get the fundamentals happening in your jazz guitar uh, playing. And you're going to have direct access to myself as well as my co-instructors to help you along in a more intensive uh, course format. So I have a lot of sort of self-paced courses on my website, but this boot camp is going to be more where we're going to be going through a group and learning material together. There'll be lots of live calls, there'll be special workshops, there'll be uh, video feedback, accountability, all that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. That'll be happening uh, at the start of April at this stage. Okay, but anyway, let's get into the lesson now. So uh, let's have a look at a chord melody version of uh, yesterday's. Uh, because I wasn't sure how the tech setup would be because I'm on the road, I actually pre-recorded this one. So let's uh, have a quick look at what that sounds like and then we'll get into the details on how you can reproduce this sound on the guitar. So let's have a look.
right, so there you go. The, um, there's a, a, a nice little chord melody arrangement of yesterday's. I actually have the sheet music of this today, so why don't we go to a screen share now and I'll, um, let's, let's have a look at how you can uh, do this technique in general uh, on, on guitar for whatever jazz standard you want to play, but this is a really good example. Okay, so let's go to that now. Okie dokie. <laughs> We had a few problems last week with this screen share, so fingers crossed it's going to work today. Okay, so let's uh, look firstly at um, the, the technique in general. Okay, so you'll see at the start here that uh, we've got the, the melody notes on the top, and generally you put these, say, on the top couple of strings, you know, these notes here. Okay, so we've got this line going across on the top here, but then we've got these little two note intervals underneath. They're technically not a chord, but I guess the, the, the melody makes the third note in the chord. Okay, now when I play this just without the, um, the backing track, it, it does sound a little bit unusual, but it can still work really well. I actually saw a, a fantastic video by Tim Lurch, I think, on YouTube playing this standard with these kinds of voicings and he was using this unaccompanied. So let's have a listen to what this sounds like. Okay, so that sort of sound. Now, uh, if, if I was to use like more sort of standard voicings underneath it, it would probably sound more like this. Okay, that, that sort of thing. So, so you can hear how you can hear the bass line there a bit clearer with the with the bass notes in the chord. Now, as a solo guitar player, that is um, really good to do. However, the problem when you're playing, I might just go to a, to another shot here so you can see my guitar a bit better. The problem when you're playing uh, these kind of voicings, uh, the, these more standard jazz chord voicings when you're trying to play a chord melody, is it kind of looks like this. Um, See how many fingers I need to use to actually sound the notes in the chord. So my, it's hard for me to be creative in the top melody line because my fingers are already taken up. Now piano players don't have this problem, right? Because a piano player can um, basically uh, you know, play the melody on the right hand and on the left hand play the various chord voicings underneath. And so with guitar, we're kind of doing everything with our fretting hand, the, the accompaniment and the melody at once. So it can become quite cluttered. Now, this was the challenge uh, that uh, Wes Mo uh, that uh, sorry Lenny Bro kind of was trying to deal with in this interesting technique because that was one of his main inspirations. He wanted to make the uh, guitar sound more like a piano when playing chord melodies. And the way to do this was to really strip the chord in the accompaniment down to the bare essentials so that you could still get the meaning of the chord generally, especially when playing with a bass player because they're doing the bass notes for you so you can kind of cut those notes out. But getting the essential notes of the chord in an easy to play way to free up the rest of your fingers. Okay, so that, that's the idea of this technique. So if we go back to my screen share now, it's funny whenever I do that zoom in, and I'm like sort of in a sort of an 80s music video with this uh, with this setup. But anyway, let's go back here now. So, if you watch my hand here, does it really sound like D minor? Well, it kind of does because it's got the third in there and it's got the seventh. So it, this is like a little mini third and seventh voicing on my on my third fret with my fourth my fourth string and my fifth string I'm just barring that in my left hand you can see that on the notation and then I've got the melody note on top okay so I can I can put this chord in anywhere I can go like that or I can play it together with the melody note I could um, play a little line you know that sort of thing I can use it as a sort of a stab chord voicing and so the, what's great about this is it's got the essential tones in the chord, but also my index finger, uh, it's very easy to play these because it's just a little bar, you know what I mean? Okay, so that's the first point you need to look out for when doing this kind of technique, is when you're using these third and seventh voicings or Lenny Bro style voicings, ideally they're in this kind of configuration. Either you've got 
the, the first finger playing as a bar, or you'll probably find this sometimes where we've got the third and the seventh on a dominant chord in this kind of configuration on these strings. Now, it doesn't just have to be on the fifth and fourth strings, but you can see like there's only these two fingers being played there. And it means that I can improvise around with my little fingers, uh, with my little finger and my third finger on the top. So you can see you get this really interesting polyphony because you can hold the bass notes down for quite a long time while you can do more punctuated phrases on the top. Okay, so this is what I've tried to do on this um, arrangement here of yesterday's. And uh, this one will just be available to gold members. Okay, so uh, I'll put this in the members area after this call, guys. Um, but give me a couple of hours and I'll, I'll publish that up there. And you'll be able to log in and access this as well as have a play along, um, you know, player so you can kind of play along with the notation. Okay, so, so just keep that in mind. But let's now look at the, at the, the first line here. We've got... It, it feels a bit strange to play like this and you do need to use finger style, right? So when I'm playing this this stuff uh, or a sort of a hybrid pricking or something like that, it's quite difficult to play this with only a pick because of the distance between the accompaniment to the top note. So you do need to have a bit of finger style under your belt for this. Okay. So... Uh, you can see that the thirds and sevenths are being sounded on each chord generally, okay, for this first line. All right, so we have the C and the F, the third and the seventh of the D minor. And then it's really easy because on the E minor, you have D and G as the third and sevenths. The D is the seventh and the G is the third. And you simply need to bar the fifth fret. Okay, and now the next one, A7, has C sharp and G. So you can see the nice voice leading between the tones in this lower accompaniment part when I'm playing. Okay, it's very smooth. Like, if you ever listen to Lenny Bro, that's one of the characteristic sounds of Lenny Bro's playing is that very smooth voice leading in the accompaniment. But this is basically all he's doing. Now, something that I find is a mistake that's, that's um, taught with this style sometimes is that they go, oh yeah, you just gotta play third and sevenths on the bottom of the chords. Now, that's correct, but watch what happens. If I all of a sudden change this one here, like let's say I've got this E minor voicing, we've got this thirds and sevenths with the D and the G, but now let's say I do the G and the D like this, okay? So I've moved the D up the octave and I get this kind of power chord style shape. That doesn't sound right to me, okay, for this style. Okay, so if I go, it's, the, the arrangement doesn't sound as good anymore because we've got that open fifth in the thirds and sevenths now. Whereas I, I find if you arrange it, if you, if you arrange it in this other way with like, like how the strings are arranged, like I can just put a bar down like this and I've got the two notes, it sounds much thicker, okay, because it's a fourth apart instead of a fifth apart. Okay, now sometimes like on a major seventh chord, this, this, this sort of technique doesn't sound that good. Um, I'll give you an example a bit later on. But okay, let, let's, let's say um, we've got uh, a, a major seventh this time. Okay, so we've got a C major seventh chord or something like that. Now the third and the seventh kind of could look like that. So that's a pretty harsh sound sometimes. So sometimes what I like to do on a major, major chord is to actually use a third and a sixth instead, okay? Now what's really nice about that is that you still get to hold a bar down, okay? Instead of doing this kind of thing, like if I did it on this string set, I'll go to a close-up so you can see a bit better. Sorry, guys. Okay, so we've got the third and the seventh of C major. But if I do that, I've got that kind of fifth interval now that sounds a bit nasty. It doesn't sound like jazz anymore. But if I use a, a third and a sixth, like an A note,
see how it sounds a bit like uh, fuller now, okay? So that's a little trick you can use when you're using um, this kind of Lenny Bro two note accompaniment technique is for major chords you can use uh, a, a, a six instead of a seven, you know? And that'll mean that you get to hold it down with a bar and it has that nice full sound. So you're generally looking for things like a perfect fourth apart like that or a tritone like that. Things like that sound really good in this kind of uh, chord melody style. All right, so let's go to the next one here. Now, um, full disclosure, I did kind of borrow this idea from Tim Lurch. I, I was very inspired by his recording here. So if we go uh, in the next line, we've got this. Okay, so you can see how uh, there's a bit of counterpoint going on. So this is actually borrowed directly from the... Um, I've lost my pen, but that's that's okay. Oh, here it is. The counterpoint can be can be implied from the um, the chord move the bass movement in the chords here. So we've got D minor here, and then we've got D minor on C sharp. You can see that C sharp there, and then we've got D minor on C. Okay. Now this is kind of difficult with this Lenny Bro technique to kind of execute that with all sorts of voicings and stuff. But all I've done is put this like the, the melody also starts on a D here. So that's just the, the, the same note as in the bass. And then it kind of moves apart. As the melody goes up, the accompaniment goes down. And it's a simple technique, but it sounds so good, you know? And then it goes back to the, the, the voicings there, okay? Now, uh, so you can also hear in this arrangement how there's different rhythms being used in the accompaniment, okay? So this is what's wonderful about this technique is because it gives you so much flexibility as to where you place these stab chords, just like a piano player would be playing in the left hand. I'll just do something else now. That sort of thing. So it's uh, it's a really cool technique, and especially it sounds good on dominant chords. Now, this is an interesting observation of the harmony here. Like if we go to the E7, you can see that the, we've got our thirds and seventh, the G sharp and the D of that chord that's played on the 11th and 12th frets of those strings there. Okay, now what happens as we go to the, uh, and uh, hello, Alan, you're calling in from the Czech Republic all the way over there, fantastic to have you here. Uh, so we can see we've got the G sharp and the D um, there. Now watch this, when we go to the, this is kind of an upbeat to the next chord. You see it was 11 and 12, the dominant intervals. And then you just go down one fret to the next one, okay? so. Every, in this sequence, we've got this series, like we've talked about this in this lesson series before, how we've got this kind of the cycle four movement, where we've got E7, this should be an A7 there, it's missing on the chart, I'll fix that up, A7, going to D7, this is pretty much D7, going to G7, going to C7. So we're going around the circle of fourths, but watch what the intervals are doing on the guitar, if we do a close up here. We've got, so. Okay, like that. It's very, very cool. So we've got E7, D7, and then we've got A7. Then we've got D7. What have we got now? We've got G7. Now we've got C7. Okay, so how easy is that to make a chord melody arrangement? You literally just pull this little shape down with these two fingers as you do melodies on top. And that's what's happening here in this part of the arrangement. So we got, I'll just go from the E7. It looks more complicated than it is. And then we got this after, uh, if we scroll down a bit to the next section. Oh, this is the wrong page. I'll just fix that up, hang on. The magic of live cinema. Okay, here we go. So then, to round out the end of the arrangement, we've got C minor and 
Jeffrey's calling in from Penis. P P Pennsylvania, fantastic to have you here, Jeffrey, and everyone else on the. We've got Charlie here as well, Marion, fantastic to have you all here. Uh, awesome guys. So now we've got C minor seven to F F thirteen, which is pretty much F seven. Okay. There. All right. So you can see in this section, we've got this lovely guide tone movement in this accompaniment as I play the melody on top. We've got the C minor, and I'm just holding the third and seventh, very convenient, with my first finger. And then we've got F7, where, see how the, the pattern, we go from here, really lovely voice leading. We can see that the, the seventh of the C minor goes to the third of the F. Okay, so. And then here, I've used that sixth idea that I was talking about before. We've got B flat major seven. Now that sounds very Lenny Bro to me, doesn't it? So we've got the D and the G in the bass now, instead of the D and the A. Listen to what happens if I use the major seventh interval there. I really don't like the sound of that, okay? So using a sixth voicing there, it sounds really nice and full. Or at least, I know it sounds fairly empty, but you'd be amazed what you can get away with when you're using this technique. You can, uh, uh, you know, even just putting these kind of a couple of tones in the bass, kind of the audience with their, that they imagine and they fill in the sound of the rest of the chord, okay? So everything's kind of implied here. Uh, it sounds a lot, that it's it's a bit like smoke and mirrors. There's a lot more that, it seems like there's a lot more there than there actually is, okay? And then we've got, oh, try that again. I didn't really bother with the E flat major seven there. Sometimes that's missing in the chart anyway. And then we've got E minor seven flat five. Once again, you can see that nice smooth guide tone movement from the third and the seventh here of the E minor seven to the A seven. Okay, cool. So that's an idea of how you can play um, this. So this arrangement's available to gold members, as I mentioned. I think there's a there's a coupon code Jazz fifty. Um, yeah, I can see that um, Ryan, you've just put that in the chat there, which is fantastic. So. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in getting that full um, PDF and play along of that, make sure you uh, have a look at signing up. And uh, yeah, so when we're using this technique, you can also do it in an improvised kind of um, style. So uh, you, it sort of frees you up, you know, because you can go... Uh, uh, hang on, I'll try that again. Okay. Like that was a bit rough then, but you get the idea. You can hear that uh, on Lenny Bro's recordings, he's got these general ideas, but then he uh, kind of manipulates them, uses a lot of melodic embellishment. And that's what's fantastic about having these fingers free on the top. You'll find that you can get this really cool sound when you play, uh, but it's not too taxing on the hands, and it doesn't kind of impede the, the single line stuff that you want to do on the top. Okay, now, uh, so that that's the thing. You can also just place these thirds and sevenths as little stab chords when you're playing the tune. So, um, like you can go... And you see how, if I just get rid of those thirds and sevenths stuff, it's like... So it doesn't sound that interesting, but as soon as I put the thirds and sevenths in the bottom... So can you see how this is a wonderful technique for your improvisation as well, not just for chord melody. You can t it, like we were talking uh, um, uh, in a previous lesson using like octaves and things like that, <laughs> using octaves and stuff like that to get some interest in the line. But you can also use these thirds and sevenths ideas to jazz up what would other be quite simple ideas. 
Okay, so um, uh, maybe for those of you listening live on the call, maybe just write the number one on the chat if you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, it would be good to get a bit of feedback. We've been kind of putting out these YouTube videos um, a fair bit lately. And if you have any questions before we wrap up, make sure that you put them in the chat right away. Um, that would be cool. So as I mentioned in the, um, at the start of this video, we have an amazing um, a couple of things coming up. We've got Rodney Jones coming up uh, in just a couple of weeks. So uh, I'll send out more information about that to my email list. So make sure you like and subscribe this YouTube video if you enjoyed today. If you want to become a gold member, you can sign up via the coupon code that's on the screen right now. Uh, use coupon code JAZZ50. And also keep in mind we've got uh, the Fret Dojo Boot Camp coming up which is going to be amazing. It's our inaugural boot camp, an online boot camp, where I'm only going to be working with about uh, probably max 20 people at this stage, maybe less, okay? So um, so it's, it's more for people that want to kind of go a bit deeper into their playing and playing along uh, and sort of workshopping ideas with me directly. It could be a really cool opportunity, so keep that in mind. Okay, so thanks guys. Uh, I think that um, if there's no questions, we might um, wrap up today's session. So that was a short one, but a good one. Uh, if you did enjoy this lesson, uh, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It really helps um, get the word out there about what we're doing here. Uh, I'm going to, So that kind of wraps up our, at least on YouTube, the Yesterday's Lesson Series. You can get the full lesson series inside Gold Membership if you, for those of you that haven't checked that out yet. So check that out and uh, we'll be doing some other cool stuff. Um, kind of, we're gonna vary up the topics a bit in future videos. We're going to do um, some cool lines. We're gonna maybe have a couple of interviews and things like that. So, uh, so keep in mind, we're gonna, we're gonna have a bit of fun with this YouTube live thing as time goes on. Okay, for those of you that are, that are part of the Gold Membership Club, uh, we'll be doing a short live session now. So check out the community for the link to that. Ryan will put that in the community now. And I'll, I'll get on there right away for kind of the, the backstage post-show Q&A. So uh, check that out. It was so cool to hang out with you guys today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.